at number 10 is Ash. Okay, yes, this guy started out outside of comics, played by actor Bruce Campbell in Sam Raimi's Evil Dead films, but he has gone over to star and be featured in tons of comics published by Dynamite Comics, and he had a very famous and I'd say important appearance in Marvel Zombies. Ash started off as an employee at S-Mart, but after taking a trip with his girlfriend to a cabin in the woods and encountering the Necronomicon, things changed. With his girlfriend and friends turned into dead and his hand lost to evil, he wields his boomstick and a chainsaw where his hand used to be and fights the forces of evil wherever he can, including facing foes like Yog sagoth Dracula, the Dark Ones, and Marvel zombies and werewolves. Hail to the king, baby. Number 9. Ulysses Bloodstone Of all Marvel Comics monster hunters, Ulysses Bloodstone is probably maybe the most famous. The man who would become Ulysses has had his name lost to time as he began life in 8250 BC at the end of the Hyborian Age. He was among a tribe of 93 other nomads who decided to try and empower themselves with the Blood Gem, which is a blood red gemstone that had been created by the evil elders of a different continent continuum and guarded by a being whose name is really hard to pronounce so we will just call it Sin with a Y. During the ritual to empower themselves, the blood gem exploded, killing his fellow tribesmen, but embedding a fragment of the gem within Bloodstone, granting him immortality, super strength, extrasensory perception, and the drive to hunt Sin over the next 10 millennia, slaying any monsters in his way and accruing quite the wealth and family. Number 8. Wong. Wong! I love talking about Wong on any list I can reasonably fit him on. And while this might seem like a weird pick for Wong, he actually does happen to be a monster hunter. Fun fact. He might not be the most powerful one on our list, but he's aided Doctor Strange before during his attempt to eliminate all vampires. And of course, being an ally, friend, and colleague of Strange's, he's seen and dealt with his fair share of monsters, ghosts, zombies, and more. One of the most famous incidences of Strange fighting against the supernatural is a story known as the Montessi formula, which pits Strange against Dracula and all of vampire kind when he basically finds an incantation known as the Montessi formula, of course, which can destroy all vampires. Wong is part of the team that Strange puts together to defeat Dracula, recovering the Darkhold and destroying all of vampire kind. Although, of course, vampires still exist in Marvel, but you know for a while defeated, temporarily. Number seven, Van Helsing. Okay, so for this point, I'm going to do something a little different. Since the character's creation in Bram Stoker's Dracula, the rights to the character of vampire hunter Van Helsing became public domain, and so both DC Comics, Marvel Comics, and so many other comic houses have had versions of this character. Van Helsing was the arch nemesis to Count Dracula, and he has been in almost all of his iterations, getting a nice fleshed out story in Marvel Comics that sees him come to an end at the hands of Dracula, or in both DC Comics and Marvel, he even had descendants in the form of Vanessa Van Helsing or Rachel Van Helsing, respectively. But Marvel's Rachel Van Helsing was honestly kind of better. Sorry, DC. Abraham Van Helsing in Marvel Comics also fought Dracula alongside the mutant Apocalypse and even fought the Wendigo as well as having another child, Noah, who also fought alongside Blade. Who is your favorite version of Van Helsing? Number Six. Batwoman. Batwoman from DC Comics, while not often thought of as a monster hunter, has fought her fair share. During New 52, this was a big part of Batwoman's narrative, weirdly. She ended up coming face to face with a real ghost who she initially had believed was a hoax, known as the Weeping Woman. After fighting the ghost, she learned that there was someone bigger behind the scenes who was using and manipulating monsters for their own gain, someone known as Medusa. This sent Kate Kane down the path of not only hunting this bigger bad, but of also crossing paths with other monsters and ghoulies as well. Number 5. Elsa Bloodstone Elsa Bloodstone is probably one of my all time favorite Marvel monster hunters. I just love her whole aesthetic so much. I seriously, I need to get on doing an Elsa Bloodstone cosplay at some point. That needs to be added to the list. But for now, I'll just have to be satisfied with talking about her on this list. Elsa is the daughter of Ulysses Bloodstone, famed monster hunter who obviously Adam just told us about. She comes with years of knowledge and training and also possesses the family heirloom which holds great power, the Bloodstone. Elsa is usually seen wearing this around her neck as a choker. Well, she does ultimately follow in her father's footsteps 
footsteps. Elsa ultimately does decide to go about monster hunting kind of in her own way. As growing up, her father was downright cruel to her, I'd say, when it came to his expectations of her and her own training. Number four, Hellboy. While I do love Hellboy as a character, I am a little fresh and new to him, so if I mess any of this up, please let me know down below. Hellboy is the son of a major demon called Azael and the witch Sarah Hughes, who is herself a descendant of Sir Mordred and by extension, King Arthur. He first appeared the night of December 23, 1944, when the evil mystic Grigori Rasputin summoned Hellboy to Earth, but baby Hellboy actually appeared miles away in a churchyard in Outer Hebrides, Scotland, where he met a team of American soldiers accompanied by Professor Trevor, is it Broom? Broom. Broom. Of the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense, or the BPRD. This baby demon was christened Hellboy and was raised in secret by the US government and trained to be a paranormal investigator. In the years following World War II, Hellboy traveled the world encountering and defeating numerous supernatural beings and disturbances such as werewolves, vampires, minor deities, mythological creatures, and beings of folklore like the Baba Yaga, the Saint Leonard Worm, the Ogdru Hem and Ogdru Jihad, and so many others, sometimes with the help of his fellow agents Abe Sapien and Elizabeth Sherman, all while also battling his own purpose to become the Beast of the Apocalypse. Number three, Constantine. Oddly enough, I was initially struggling to think of DC characters who hunt monsters, but then I realized while Constantine usually is busy dealing with the general magic and demonic scum of the earth as sort of fellow anti-hero scum himself, he could technically be considered a monster hunter because he does that too. Probably one of the best that DC has to offer actually. Usually when you have a monster to deal with, Constantine is one of the people that you would come to. John Constantine also happens to be affiliated with Justice League Dark as well, a team of heroes who are brought together to face more magic based and monstrous threats. The 2018 volume of the series also has a distinct horror feel to it, which fits perfectly as well with Constantine, who is well known for his own terrifying original series from the Vertigo imprint of DC, Hellblazer. Also for those who want to tell me in the comments that I'm saying Constantine wrong, I am saying it the way Neil Gaiman says it, and he's taking the pronunciation from Alan Moore himself, one of the creators of John. Constantine, so I'm gonna say it that way. But if you say teen, that's cool too. Say it however you want. We don't have to fight. Number two, Doctor Strange. Just like Constantine, well, Sort of like Constantine, no, Doctor Strange isn't really known for being a monster hunter specifically. He's known for being the Sorcerer Supreme and being the protector of our reality. But what do you know? Fighting mystical threats often means you fight demons, magical creatures, and monsters, baby. Mephisto, Nightmare, Satanish, The Dweller in Darkness, Cthone, Shuma Gorath, Dracula, The Lilin, Gargantos, that tentacle thing in Multiverse of Madness, The Mindless Ones, The Dragon of the Moon, The Three Mothers, The Peregrine Child, The Undying Ones, Mr. Misery. If it's a monster or does monstrous magical things in Marvel Comics, the Sorcerer Supreme has either fought it or has the knowledge to help you fight it. Not to mention he has founded or been a part of some of the best monster fighting teams out there, usually with the aid of Number one, Blade. Blade is probably one of the most iconic monster hunters, never mind Marvel has to offer, just in comics in general. In fact, he's so iconic as a monster hunter, most people forget that he's actually a Marvel character. Blade is Eric Brooks. He's a vampire hunter who happens to be half vampire himself. We typically call him a dampire. He was born this way after his mother Tara was attacked by a vampire, posing as a physician while she gave birth. She had actually come to the man for help, but instead, of course, was killed. How awful. However, her son Eric survived. Eric would grow up hating vampires, with the one who took his mother's life, Deacon Frost, becoming his sworn enemy. While Blade is generally known for his own powerful origin story, which often fuels his adventures, he also happens to be an Avenger currently as well. So. Yeah. At least he was at the time of this recording. He might not be now, but I hope he still is, because I love it. And at number 10 is Werewolf by Night. Jack Russell, the Werewolf by Night, made his Marvel debut in 1971's Marvel Spotlight number two. He was actually born in Transylvania as Jacob Rusoff. Russell is a descendant of Grigory Rusoff, who in 1795 was turned into a werewolf after fighting Dracula. Grigory managed to keep the curse dormant for many generations until it was reactivated by Jack's 
grandfather, Gregor, using powers from a copy of the Darkhold. When under the full moon, the curse turns Gregor and his descendants into werewolves with supernatural abilities including enhanced strength, stamina, agility, reflexes, speed, senses, and durability with a regenerative healing factor, but a weakness of silver. In his solo series from 1972, Jack fights threats like Dracula and enemies that either want to steal his abilities or steal his family's copy of the Darkhold. He even came into a famous conflict in issue number 32 in May of 1975 that introduced Moon Knight to Marvel Comics. He is also soon to be a part of the MCU alongside a few other monsters. Number 9. Franken Castle After he was killed by Dakin on orders from Norman Osborn during the Dark Reign event, Frank Castle, yes the Punisher, was revived by the Legion of Monsters as an undead zombie-like monster known as Franken Castle. The Legion resurrected Frank to recruit him in their fight against the villain known as Hellsguard, who was systematically killing off monsters using samurai-like assassins. Although he originally refused to help, Frank got involved after seeing innocent younger monsters being dispatched too, and that is not something Frank is willing to abide. So he went on to slay hordes of Hellsguard's men. It's honestly an incredibly interesting moment in Frank Castle's history, and it got this version of Frank moved to Earth 666. He also nearly enacted revenge against Dakin being stopped by Wolverine before he was returned to his human form through the Bloodstone. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video and you aren't already subscribed, be sure to slap that subscribe button to see more lists and explanation videos all about comic book characters. Number 8. Nkonthu the Living Mummy Nkonthu was the leader of a very strong tribe in the Sub-Sahara that was enslaved by the Egyptians around 3,000 years ago. After he led a revolt against the pharaoh and even took the pharaoh's life with a spear, Nkonthu was paralyzed by the pharaoh's sorcerer and mummified, but made immortal so as to suffer as a living mummy. Now, fast forward to the 20th century and the living mummy regained the ability to move again and he clawed his way out of his slumber and terrorized Cairo until he was eventually seemingly defeated. Only not really, because he came back. The living mummy has actually acted as a hero as well. Quite a bit, honestly, helping out on many teams using his super strength, stamina, and durability, plus a form of immortality that doesn't let him die from anything except some physical attacks. Also, after being charged by Anubis, Nkantu has apparently gained the ability to draw souls from sentient beings. Number 7, Sauron. Calling him a monster is a little unfair, but also not really. As a child, Dr. Carl Lycos was attacked by a mutated pterodon and somehow became an energy vampire forced to absorb the life energy from animals and humans in order to survive. However, after absorbing energy from the mutant Havoc, the energy triggered his metamorphosis into a creature that resembled a half-humanoid pterodon, who retained his human intelligence and the ability to speak. However, the transformation distorted Lycos' personality, turning him evil. Hence, Lycos took the name Sauron after the arch-villain of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. He has come into many conflicts and alliances with various mutants, including the X-Men over his history, and he eventually became Conqueror of the Savage Land, which is a hidden refuge for dinosaurs nestled in the modern Antarctic. Number 6. Morbius Yes, it is indeed Morbin time, my friends. As probably one of the most frequently occurring and now most memed Marvel monsters, Michael Morbius is a prominent figure for monsters and mystical beings in Marvel comics. Suffering from a rare blood disease, Morbius turned to a cure that used vampire bat DNA. Now this mutated him into a blood-sucking creature of the night and a pseudo-vampire, with all the perks of vampirism minus the draw pack, except for looking utterly terrifying. He was at first a villain due Doing battle against the likes of Spider-Man and of course Blade, but he eventually became a conflicted hero, using his abilities to help others while battling his bloodlust and trying to cure himself of his curse. Number 5. Dracula. Moving from a pseudo vampire to the lord of all vampires, Dracula is an incredibly old vampire, sorcerer, and nobleman who became the supreme ruler of all vampires while also being the most powerful vampire of all time. The Wallachian Count Vlad turned himself into a vampire in order to face the invading Ottoman forces in the 1400s. Now, minus the abilities native to most vampires, including superhuman attributes, hypnotism, immortality, and shapeshift, 
shifting. Vlad is a sorcerer, and he has even the ability to control the weather to a degree that can even oppose both Storm of the X-Men and the god Thor. Recently, he has declared the site and surrounding area of Chernobyl the Vampire Kingdom. He used this seat of power to seal the blood of Wolverine that allowed Dracula to survive in sunlight for a limited time. But he has done so much more during his long run in Marvel Comics starting in 1950. Number 4. Fing Fang Foom He whose limbs shatter mountains and whose back scrapes the sun. Fing Fang Foom is a member of a race of shape-shifting aliens from a world called Kakaranthara, or if you prefer, the much easier Maklu 4. Foom was the navigator of the spacecraft that landed on Earth in ancient China, and he volunteered himself to be put in a tomb in a deep slumber to serve as a backup plan for the other Makluans to conquer Earth. Fing Fang Foom looks a lot like a kind of humanized Chinese dragon when he is in his natural form, and is a massive shapeshifter from anywhere between 32 to 255 feet. As a dragon and alien, he possesses super strength, stamina, durability, and longevity, as well as telepathy and flight, spiritual possession, energy assimilation, acid mists, and potential transmogrification abilities. He has fought and allied with so many different heroes over his time, including a hilarious fight with the Hulk, where he was thrown to the moon. Number 3. Zenmu The alien cybernetic monster Zenmu is an an incredibly intelligent being with a huge amount of strength and power. Introduced in Marvel Comics in 1960's Journey into Mystery, he is one of the first monsters introduced, and he even predates the Fantastic Four. Zenmu is able to cast hypnotic rays that can control the entire human population. He can use telekinesis, scatter his atoms, and even inhabit host bodies. In other words, Zenmu is incredibly powerful. Most recently, Zenmu was a foe to the Hulk in the Immortal Hulk series. Series. He was hired by the Roxxon company to ruin the Hulk's public image by creating disasters and swooping in to save the day. Zenmu used his hypnotic powers to persuade civilians and even close friends and allies of the Hulk to turn their backs on him. Thankfully though, the Hulk managed to break free of his control and he actually completely destroyed Zenmu. Coming in at number 2 is Man-Thing. Ted Salas was a scientist first assigned to something called Project Sulfur, in which he created a serum that made people immune to all toxic biochemicals. But it also, unfortunately, turned them into monsters. This serum was called SO2. However, Salas had to flee from forces who desired his formula for their own nefarious purposes. He injects himself with the serum, but after crashing in a specific swamp and dying, he is transformed into a swamp creature through a combination of this formula and magical forces existing in the area. As Man Thing, Ted is practically invincible. He can be destroyed, but as long as there is vegetation on Earth, he grows back his body. Depending on the situation, his super strength is possibly limitless. He has fought against the Hulk, the Thing, and the entire Marvel Champions team. Man Thing also has the ability to teleport around the Earth using Nexus points. He can breathe underwater and can't really be held captive as he can just ooze past objects, like if you locked him behind bars, he can just walk through the bars. The last of his powers consists of detecting emotions. Positive emotions make him feel calm and reserved, but negative feelings make him go ballistic, making him secrete an ooze that can burn almost anything, including Luke Cage's skin. Man-Thing is also capable of controlling the nexus of all realities. During fear itself, Man-Thing's power increased, releasing him from the bond to the nexus of all realities and allowing him to teleport wherever he wishes at will. And later, his powers grow so great that he is able to manipulate reality. Also, Man-Thing is one of the few beings shown to be naturally immune to the Marvel Zombies Plague. And in at number one is Jormungand. According to Norse legend, Jormungand is the son of Loki and the Jotunheim sorceress Angerboda. Realizing the danger that Jormungand posed to the gods of Asgard, Odin, the ruler of the realm of Asgard, banished Jormungand to the depths of the ocean of Earth, 
or Midgard. Now Jormungand not only survived in the oceans but grew to an incredible size. At his full size Jormungand was big enough to encircle the entire planet and Jormungand became known as the Midgard Serpent. It was prophesied that on the day of Ragnarok when it is said that most of the gods of Asgard will pass away that Odin's son Thor will kill the Midgard Serpent but Thor himself would die as a result of the Midgard Serpent's venom. So we know the Midgard Serpent's venom can kill Asgardian gods but by compressing his coils around the planet he could also magically cause storms, earthquakes and other disasters. He was also usually in an ethereal form making him invisible and intangible to humans but if he came out of this form fully he would destroy a lot of stuff on earth. So it's kind of good that he stays that way. In battles he has had with Thor only a part of him ceased to be ethereal and that one part was absolutely massive. Becoming visible also froze time while he and Thor battled. Thor and beings as strong as him are the only ones capable of defeating the serpent but Thor is the only one to have actually done it. Coming in at number 10 is Vampire by Night. I honestly didn't know there was also a vampire by night and she's actually related to the werewolf by night. Nina Price, the niece of Jack Russell, the werewolf by night, is also an ancestor of Grigory Rusoff. Nina's mother, Lisa Russell, was a victim of the same curse as Jack Russell, except things changed for this branch of the family when an altercation with a sorcerer named Glitter Knight freed Lissa from being a werewolf. Lissa married and had Nina with a wealthy man named Mr. Price. Unfortunately, the werewolf curse continued to Nina, but at some point, Nina was attacked by a vampire, which altered the curse for Nina and caused her to be both a werewolf and vampire in one. By day, Nina Price seemed to be a normal human, but once the sun goes down, she becomes a vampire, which is a good way of getting around the whole sunburning weakness. Due to the werewolf's curse though, Nina does become a white wolf during the full moon, but she uses her father's money and status to reserve a zoo or park, caging herself there until the full moon was over and she was no longer an animal. However, Nina had no problem using her supernatural abilities to harm criminals. Rightfully so. Nerds, if you are enjoying this video, I call upon you to hit the like button. It is all you have to do to show us your support here at Top 10 Nerd. Number 9, Frankenstein's Monster. In case you have never heard of Frankenstein's Monster, the creature was originally the creation of English author Mary Shelley, who wrote a novel in 1818 titled Frankenstein that tells the story of Victor Frankenstein, a young scientist who creates a sentient undead creature in a scientific experiment. It's actually a very deep and somewhat moving story. Now, the Marvel Universe version of Frankenstein and his monster isn't too different. In 1788, Victor Frankenstein left his family estate in Geneva, Switzerland to study natural science. Victor became obsessed with the idea of recreating life and began robbing graveyards in order to acquire body parts that he then stitched together and subjected to chemical treatments and electrolysis. But it horrified the scientist and he fled, leaving the monster alone in the world. Frankenstein being an undead being is essentially immortal and immune to disease. He can lift around 10 tons, he has superhuman stamina and durability, and he can replace any lost limbs with other people's limbs, which is both creepy and kind of cool. Number 8, Sasquatch. Although the Sasquatch, or Bigfoot in the real world, is a folklore monster, in Marvel, he's actually Walter from down the street. Walter Lankowski, or Sasquatch, is actually a gamma mutate. The Canadians started to focus on gamma research after meeting Bruce. Bruce Banner and then specifically he focused on the Hulk after learning Hulk was indeed Bruce. While on leave from MIT, Dr. Lankowski began working on a gamma radiation experiment that could create a being like the Hulk only under more controlled circumstances. Being bombarded by massive amounts of gamma radiation, Walter turned into a huge, hairy, light brown creature with similar abilities to the Hulk and after rampaging, he learned how to retain his intelligence and personality while transformed joining Alpha Flight as their heavy hitter. More recently, he actually got possessed by Doc Samson and is now green and technically Sasquatch is Samson. So I hope that's not too confusing because I'm confused. Number 7, Reptil. While accompanying his parents on an archaeological dig, Humberto Lopez and his family discovered a fossilized amulet. Humberto eventually took possession of this fossil which activated one day when a rock slide occurred nearly burying him. Berto ran as fast as he could and once he was far away, he 
noticed that his legs had transformed into those of a dinosaur. That's because the amulet that Berto and his family discovered was magically created by the Hag of the Pits to imbue its bearer with the abilities of prehistoric animals as well as empathic communication with them to defend said animals when the time came. His powers were also later augmented with pin particles to allow him to alter his size. Now originally, Reptile could only transform certain parts of his body into different aspects of dinosaurs like the wings of a pterodactyl, the tail of a stegosaurus, the head of a parasaur, and the legs of a velociraptor. That kind of thing. He could also only maintain one transformation at a time. He could even just enhance his senses like vision and hearing. But eventually, Reptile was able to fully transform into a complete dinosaur or even other prehistoric animals like insects which gave him enhanced healing. Number 6. Electro One Alright, Electro One should probably be on a list of robots, but his story is so classic monster like that I just wanted to include him. A scientist named Wilbur Poole set out to create the world's most advanced computer, but a bizarre accident caused the computer to become sentient. It then brainwashed Poole and forced him to build a body to house itself. When Poole had finished the body, the computer moved itself to the robot and went out into the world rampaging, like they always do. Electro, as the people called it, came into conflict with the US military who proved no match for the numerous powers of the robot, which included psionic force fields, gamma ray blasts, atomic manipulation of living creatures, and object levitation, while also having a robotic metal body. He was eventually defeated by his creator and then eventually found by Reed Richards, who shrunk him down and set the robot to work in the Baxter building. Electro One also joined the Fing Fang and fought off the warlord Tim Boo Ba, which is a great sentence. Then he got confused for the villain Electro and was arrested. You should have seen that one coming though. I don't know. Number five. Goom. Goom, the thing from Planet X. In the Tales of Suspense number 15 from October 1960, the astronomer Mark Langley wanted to see if there was life on a planet he discovered called Planet X. So he tried to communicate with anyone through a transmitter. Unfortunately, the alien known as Goom received the transmission and followed the signal back to Earth, arriving in his ship to conquer the world. In a show of power against the world's leaders, Goom showed off some of his abilities and technology, like a time machine that could reverse someone back into a baby, a weapon that could destroy an entire mountain, or a force field that protected him from any weapon. He was even able to lift an entire city with his mind. But thankfully, the other members of his race, who were all pacifists, were contacted. They came, arrested Goom, and took him back to their planet. Number four. Godzilla. Did you know Godzilla was a part of Marvel? He was even a part of Earth 616. Starting in May 1977, Marvel Comics published comics all about Godzilla. As some of you may know, Godzilla came to be during a Pacific nuclear bomb test in the 1950s. Tokyo in 1956. But then the monster became trapped in ice off the coast of Alaska. It then resurfaced in the modern day, and S.H.I.E.L.D. put together a Godzilla squad to try and take on the massive creature. It went rampaging all over America, doing battle with S.H.I.E.L.D., the Champions, the Fantastic Four, Iron Man, the West Coast Avengers, a massive Red Ronin robot, and more. Using his incredible nuclear atomic fire breath, insanely durable hide, regenerative power, and it's surprising intelligence. Number three, the Hulk. Probably the most well-known monster in Marvel Comics, if you wanted to call him that. The power of the Hulk is almost unmatched. You know the story. When testing a gamma bomb he developed, Bruce Banner rushed out into the blast radius to save Rick Jones. He was blasted with an insane amount of gamma radiation, turning him into a hulking, gray colored beast with incredible amounts of strength, durability, stamina, regeneration, speed, adaptation, and the ability to seemingly never pass away. His rampages are the things of legend, and the Hulk was the original reason all the Avengers even came together in the first place. One of the best characters Marvel has under its roof. Number two, Mangog. The Mangog is the physical manifestation of the strength and hatred of a billion billion beings belonging to a race that was completely wiped out by the ruler of Asgard, Odin. To call him powerful is a bit of an understatement. While Thor has managed to defeat Mangog, usually by tapping into the omnipotent potential of the Odin force, as long as hate exists in the universe, Mangog will exist and grow more powerful as hate grows and festers 
even during battles. He's gone toe to toe with Odin, who is one of the most powerful beings in the universe. In fact, Mangog is one of the few beings that Odin is actually afraid of. He's fought both Thor and Odin at the same time to the point that they were completely incapacitated. He's swatted away Mjolnir like a fly and taken star destroying weapons to the face with ease. And he's even survived being thrown into the sun with only a minor char. Number one, Shuma Gorath. Yes, it is a giant tentacled eyeball. But hold off on the laughter because Shuma Gorath, the destroyer, the conqueror of midnight, the all killer of the dawn, is a ridiculously ancient being and greatest of the old gods or many angled ones. Among his many powers is the ability to communicate with and control others nearby and across dimensions. He can create and direct powerful blasts of mystical energy and affect transmutations on a planetary scale. His skin alone is difficult to damage even with the most powerful of magic. While his form seems silly, it's actually only a shell containing his power and he can alter his appearance and his true form is not even visible to humans. He can destroy multiple galaxies solely through his aura pressure and Shumagorath also has the ability to destroy realities. He is most powerful in his home dimension just like others of his kind and only part of his power has actually appeared on earth and with the stuff he has done that should tell you just how powerful he is. Thank you.